All right. So, commonly known as my heads are leaking. Do you see that one's running down the driveway there? There's a new install so we can kind of travel the lines. This one's also leaking. A lot of this is caused by <clears throat> the breeze that are getting in the valves and getting stuck. I'm gonna show you how to fix that. Uh, first of all, if you're having problems with it on multiple zones and you happen to be on a well, you should add a filter in. You're gonna filter out any of the small debris and I'll show you this in here. We can go turn off the water. The water's off. I'm gonna give you a good view of the valve I'm gonna do right here. <clears throat> And this is the Aerotrol 2400 valve, specifically. I have a nice head wrench that can fit in and loosen this. There is a specific wrench to actually do that too. Let's show the internal sides of this valve before I get going. So this ring, once you loosen the ring up, the ring will pop. It'll be held by your solenoid wires. Um, the solenoid, of course, come off. So there's the cap of the jar top. There's the spring that sits on top of, I even got this in camera, probably don't. So we got, once you loosen the jar top off, you got a cap that sits on the spring that lines up with the pin. And then that comes out. There is this ring, but I'm, Never had a problem with the rings themselves. Uh, sometimes the inner ring right here will have damage or a nick in it and can let water bypass. So that's one of the things you're going to look for. I know on this valve exactly what's wrong with it because I've taken apart all the other ones in the yard. Well, and I'm over to this box that's close to the water shut off, turn on. So you might get a little spray. I'm gonna just set that aside completely. Um, pull my old diaphragm out. I'm gonna show it to you. See that little nick right there? The little flake of rust and then the nick next to it, like It'll dent the diaphragm. If they got damage to those diaphragms, they're junk. Like you will see a smooth ring around them, but they won't have any little dents like that. So I'll put the new diaphragm back on. This little trickle of water isn't that bad. If you do them and they're downhill, they might be pretty bad. So I'm gonna put the spring back in place. I'm going to put the jar top and the cap on, uh, line it up with the spring. And so I'm not worried about the uh, ring, but I'll just get that aligned with the pin in top. And I will screw the ring on. I will loosen uh, the solenoid in this part because I'm going to use the one that's already wired up. Completely fine. I do want to make sure this is completely tight all the way so that's tight um this little ring little manual turn ring uh we'll lift off so you can and there's a post and put this same solenoid that's wired to that zone back on and there you go all right i'm gonna do one other one here with the water slightly on and another mention of note. So this is a hollow pin right here and debris can get, especially small sand can get built up in there. So you take a small wire and poke it through that can free any debris. And that's usually the zone will be fully on, fully running, not just weeping. Uh, weeping valves will have, you know, dribbling heads like that. Uh, now I'm going to go back on. I'm going to turn the water on just the slightest. 
I'm gonna have it run just a little bit because I want to flush any of the debris that's remaining in these valves out. So again, I don't see this one, it's not quite tight. So I'll tighten that one down. I will loosen my second valve here. And I'll start prepping the new valve. It's probably cheaper to buy the new valve if you're gonna rebuild it completely like this, then uh, I probably could just get away with replacing the rubber diaphragms, but, and you see like this valve, there's a bunch of dirt, like you really gotta wash them off, um, all the dirt off to make sure that that's not gonna interfere with the seal. Show you this diaphragm. You can see the dents right there. Junk. Every single zone of this well system is just bringing up water like that, or bringing up debris, particles of rust other heavy minerals that are in the water. And one final tighten with the wrench. So when I twist those off, I do want to leave them, the wires twisted, not straighten them, because it makes it way easier to go back in. So I got that back in. And that's pretty much it. I'm gonna continue to go through and feel free to thumbs up the video if this helped you. Always, as always, if you have any irrigation questions, just uh, let the dude man know. I'll try to answer as soon as I can. Uh, pretty responsive to people uh, that got questions trying to help. I know as of right now, it's kind of crazy, hard to get somebody out. Sometimes the sprinkler guys are not answering their phones and what have you. Same thing, bunch of damage on this one. Letting the water flow, push out any small debris. I really won't, well, it could clog the noggle, nozzles, not noggles, nozzles at the heads. Uh, but some of the larger rotors and stuff would probably be able to push that stuff right through that tightened all right guys i'm gonna switch the last solenoid over thanks for watching